It's the anointing that removes burdens. It's the anointing that destroys yokes. When you understand that, when somebody gets up and says, healing's not for today, all the alarms go off. That is anti the anointed one. You don't need anyone to teach you that because the anointing in you has awakened. Now, we have been talking about the anointing. Everybody say the anointing. We've been talking about the word Christ. Everybody say Christ. As we've learned, Christ is a Greek word. It's translated from the Hebrew word Messiah. Messiah in the Hebrew literally means the anointed one. The anointed one. Everybody say anointed. Anointed Christ Messiah. They are exactly the same meaning. So in that context, we're having a look at what this Christ is as the anointed one. How important is it to us as believers? Let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour. Well, if the last hour was almost 2,000 years ago, I would have to update that to this is the last seconds. How you would say amen. And you have heard the Antichrist is coming. What does Antichrist mean? Well, translate and meditate. What does Christ mean? The anointed one and his anointing. What's anti mean? Against. So what's anti mean? Against, antichrist, against the anointed one and his anointing. So now, when you understand antichrist, I'm not calling someone evil. You can love Jesus and go to heaven and still be anti the anointing. That means you can love Jesus, go to heaven, but never see his power manifesting in fullness. You getting this? So the one that's against the anointing is coming. Even now, many antichrists have come. What's he saying? It's not just the antichrist. There are a lot of people that will be against this anointing. by which we know it's the last hour. Now listen to this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they, were, that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. How many of you know everything? Yes. I just read it to you, and you still... <laughs> Let me see, how many of you are born again? Put your hand down. How many of you are anointed? You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things things. How many you know everything? See, now your brain may not know it yet, but the one who knows everything is living inside of you. How? By this anointing. Verse 21, I've not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one? Notice, not that denies Jesus. People can accept Jesus and still deny the anointing. Now, they may never say, I deny Christ. They may not even say, I deny the anointing. But they may say, I deny that healing takes place today. That is denying the anointing. And in Greek, it's denying Christ. 
We have to say amen or ouch. There's only two responses to that. So I have to be cautious about what I say is not today and what's not. Because if the Holy Spirit is the one that brings that power and removes burdens and destroys yokes, and I don't accept the fullness of that anointing, then I'm denying that Jesus is the Christ. And what does he say? That's a liar. I didn't say it. He said it. John said it. Say, John said it. Look at verse 22. Who is a liar? He who denies that Jesus is the anointed one. He is anti-Christ. Anti the anointing. Who denies the Father and the Son. Now, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And in this is the promise that He has promised us, eternal life. Now, these things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Listen to it. Those who try to deceive you, the anointing which you've received from him abides in you. You do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, see, a lot of people say, you see, we don't need teachers today. Well, that would negate Ephesians chapter 4. Because we learned last week, God gives some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and so evidently God thinks we need teachers. So this is not saying you don't need a teacher. Because at the end of the day, as right now I am in the anointing of teaching, so, as I said before, you don't need the anointing of father now. I don't need the anointing of husband now. Don't need even the anointing of pastor right now. Right now, I'm walking in the anointing of teacher. But you understand that as I teach, I'm not teaching you by natural knowledge. It's still the Holy Spirit in me. So, it's still the anointing teaching you. So, it's not a man teaching you. So, that's number one. Number two, what is he talking here? What's the context? The Antichrist. So how do we know who's Antichrist and who's not? He says, you have the anointing in you. You will know. You will know. In other words, once you understand the anointing, once you understand the anointed one as the anointing, that it's the anointing that removes burdens, it's the anointing that destroys yokes, it's the anointing that heals, it's the anointing that delivers, it's the anointing that breaks poverty and brings prosperity, it's the anointing that illuminates, it's the anointing that teaches. When you understand that, when somebody gets up and says, healing's not for today, you don't, don't, don't know. Everything, all the alarms go off. That is anti the anointed one. You don't need anyone to teach you that. Because the anointing in you has awakened. You're alert to that anointing. And because you're alert to the anointing, you don't even need me. When you're sitting at home watching YouTube and they throw a video at you, you start watching that. You don't need pastor and saying, no, 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 don't watch that. Don't watch that. You have the anointing. You go, that is anti-Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now you have, now you're equipped with the ability to stand against and say, no, that's anti-Christ. And you're not calling the person evil or despicable. Or, no, it's not even calling them the devil. It is anti the anointed one. It's anti that anointing. It's not trying to get you to go to hell. It's trying to stop the power from working in your life. Just need to put a little question mark. Did God really say, are you sure? Is he trying to keep something from you? Are you? That's anti the anointing. It's to stop. The devil doesn't care if you sing songs. He doesn't care if you read the Bible. It's when you open your mouth and power comes out of it. 
that he wants to stop. Everything he did in someone's life took 30 years to crush this person's life and destroy them. And they don't, they just want to kill themselves and go to hell. And you step in and one application anointing, bam, destroys that. And that person's born again. That's 30 years of work gone in a second. He doesn't want people walking around like that, can just throw the name of Jesus and destroy everything he's done. He's got to stop you any way he can. How does he do that? Short circuit this anointing. How does he do it? Come with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 25. Now I'm reading from the King James. It's just put slightly different. The new King James, I think, just stepped a little away from what this anointing is. It's still there. But if you look at it from the original, it's, it's quite clear. So I, that's why I'm reading King James now. Normally I read from the new King James. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Do not be angry. Why? He wants nice, calm people. Amen? Do not be angry. Do not sin. Don't let, I'm, I'm slightly rephrasing it because I don't want to stay in the old English. You understand? But I'm getting to a point. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. You don't want to go to bed angry. Why not? Hang in there. Don't give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needs. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only that which is good, use it for edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, family, the implication is that all the things, like you lose your temper, you get angry, you speak ugly about someone, you do horrible things, then what's that doing? You're grieving the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit with which you were sealed to the day of redemption. Listen to this. Let all bitterness, all wrath, anger, clamor. What's clamor? Shouting. Angry shouting. Let all evil speaking be put away with you, put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another. Why? Be tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Why? Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Now, for a long time, before I understood this revelation, read that, God forgave you for his sake because he wants you in heaven more than you want to be there. Now, that is true, and that can be read there. God forgave you, therefore you should forgive others. Forgive other people because he's forgiven you. That, that's, that's being kind. Now, because he's forgiven you, you should forgive everyone. But read it the way it's written. God has forgiven you. For what reason? For the sake of the anointed one. Okay, I don't think everybody got that. Yes, amen. No, no, no. Listen. The anointed one and his anointing. How many of you want the anointing working in your life? It cannot work in your life 
unless He forgives you. Because if He forgives you, He removes the sin from your life. And by removing the sin from your life, now the anointing can flow. So God needed the anointing alive in the earth, and He does it in you, through you. He works in the body of the anointed one. For that anointing to flow, He had to first forgive you. Yes, He forgave you to get you out of hell. Yes, He forgave you because He loves you. Yes, He forgave you because He wants for you. But the primary purpose is He wanted back in the earth. And he can only be in the earth through someone who has yielded their life completely. Now he can move through them. And the devil knows that. And if he can get you angry with someone, uh, grieved with someone, lose your temper with that person, start saying ugly things, batter, just be emotional abuse, just, I don't know that person. What happens? You empty the anointed one. And that anointing stops working in your life. And now all of a sudden, I don't understand why things are always going wrong. But you're always fighting with someone. I don't understand why I just can't ever meet my bills. Yeah, but you're skinner, skinner, skinner there. <laughs> See, we don't put the two together. Amen. And why I'm always sick. Look at what you're saying. What are you doing? What are you talking? Not just you, me too. Got, what is it? Sometimes the devil attacks just because he attacks. It's not like everything goes wrong. Is, you know, that's the devil's fault. And Jesus even had Satan come against him. But if something keeps showing up in my life, and I'm wondering, what is that? But in the meantime, on the sidelines, I'm still, you know, moaning, complaining. Everything's a problem. Angry. Not forgiving people. When I say forgive them, you know, I'll forgive them, but I, you know, I just don't forget. Just gotta, no, no, I'm talking about total, like, like, like you can sit down and have a cup of coffee with them. Why? That's how Jesus forgave you. Why? For the purpose of the anointing. Can you see? When, we, when I've started by saying antichrist, we thought of the devil. Then later on, we thought about people who don't come to this church. But now we've come right home, haven't we? I said, there's only two responses. Read this from the message translation. Read, look at the message. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Each word a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break His heart. His Holy Spirit is moving and breathing in you, is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for Himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting talk, all backbiting talk, all profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in this anointed one forgave you. Family, it's for the sake of the anointing. It's not just so God can say, look how nice and friendly my church is. It's for the anointing. See, I don't know when I need to lay hands on someone, so I dare not have an argument with you and then walk out the house and say something ugly, and that's the last thing I said to someone. And all of a sudden, I need to raise someone from the dead. I need to know the anointing's working in full power in my life at all times. I don't want to go to sleep having just had an argument with my wife, and we're angry with one another. Well, I we just see you tomorrow. And turn over, because the devil doesn't sleep. That antichrist is still at work, and who knows what he can do in those sleeping hours. 
And I'm trusting God for angels to surround our house, to protect us, to keep me in the sleep. Even in the, when I'm in the dark hours, he still speaks to my spirit. I've got things I need to hear from heaven. I've got things working in my spirit. I've got you know, faith projects on the go. I've got, come on, it's not just me. It's my family. It's the spiritual family. It's the ministry. It's the word. Lives that are, people are going to get saved the Sunday coming up. I have to be, make sure the anointing's alive in my life. I don't have time to argue and moan and complain. Let's get rid of this. Let's sort it out right Yeah. If you need to be, me forgive you, I'll forgive you. I don't care if it was me or not. I'll just, just, let's put it aside for the sake of the anointing. I don't want to be anti-Christ. See, Acts 2, 38, Peter said to them, repent. What's repent mean? Change the way you see, change the way you think, change the way you act. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus, the anointed one, for the remissions of sins, and then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is to you and to your children, to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Family, the reason the Holy Spirit entered into your life is because you made a decision to change. And on that confession, God gave you the anointing. Now protect it. Protect the anointing. I want to encourage you today, family. You're born again. You have the Holy Spirit. You know what your trigger points are. Meditate on it. Think about it. What's been anti Christ? What's anti the, what's trying to stop the anointing in my life? And you'll begin to recognize it. That's not just someone being ugly to me. That's not just this being a problem. It's not just that. No, when I watch that, it stops this anointing. That's where the antichrist is getting into my life. That's it. That's the last time I watch those things ever again. Never, never again. It's not that it's sin. It's for you. That particular subject is antichrist. Stop it. Stop it. It's not just don't sin so you don't go to hell. No, I know what dries up my awareness. The Holy Spirit never dries up. It's not like, oh, you shut down the anointing. No, the anointing only flows through willing and healed vessels. And if you understand that, then you recognize, okay, that was antichrist. So I'm not going to let that influence me anymore. Hallelujah. See, when you're aware of the anointing, you can walk into a room and go, anti-Christ. Let me walk out. See, now you're aware and you will watch the power in your life go to another level. All of a sudden, you start speaking and the weather listens. I mean, when that kind of life, is it worth protecting the anointing? Give him praise if you got someone in. Hallelujah. I'm going to operate at a heaven level on the earth. It's through understanding Christ, the anointing of the anointed one. God's desire is for everyone to know that he has not only saved our souls, but that he's also destroyed the curse and everything that the enemy has brought against mankind. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the anointing removed and destroyed every evil curse, everything. In this series, Alan Bagg unpacks what the anointing is and what it means to his children. A lot of people have come to the conclusion that Christ is kind of Jesus' sermon. Christ is a Greek word, it's not an English word. Alan Bagg will also help Scripture come alive to you as you discover through translation and meditation what God is saying to us in His Word. Translate and meditate. We can discover the power of this movie. Get the series online at allenbagministries.org and understand the anointing. What a powerful message. Now who can resist what comes with gaining the anointing? And the only way to gain the anointing, to gain Christ, is by giving your life to Jesus. 
and maybe you're watching this message today and you haven't yet given your life to Jesus. You haven't accepted Him as your Lord and your Savior. Today, I want to help you, lead you in that prayer, guide you to making Jesus your Lord and your Savior. So if that's you, I want you to say this prayer out loud with me today. Say this, thank you, Jesus. Today, I choose you. I choose to serve you and I choose to live for you. I make a decision to make you Lord and my Savior. And from today, you are my everything. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen, congratulations to everyone that just made their decision to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. Us here at Allenbag Ministries, we would like to get to you free resources in helping you build your faith and help you in your walk with God from today. So what you can do is you can make your way to our website and get these free resources for yourself. They will help you in your walk with God and build your faith from today. Now, if you are interested in learning more about the anointing and learning more about Christ, I've seen in my own life that the more I study it and meditate on it, the more God reveals how deep this actually goes. This is not a surface level teaching. It goes so deep, but it only comes from meditation and from reading and from listening and from learning. So I want to encourage you, go to our website, get these messages for yourself so you can listen to them over and over so that the anointing can become real to you. Well, praise God. Family, thank you for joining us on Wisdom for Life. I'm Joshua Bag, and Jesus is Lord. And life is a choice. Choose life. We invite you to visit us online at allenbagministries.org. Whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.